Good afternoon. How's it going? Good afternoon, Commander. Thank you for joining me. Absolutely. I I really appreciate you joining me this afternoon. It's it's very much a pleasure to talk to you. Now, where where are you exactly? I am exactly in Bangor, Maine, right now. Very good. I'll be there soon, as you know, and and that's why you're calling, I imagine. That you are exactly right. Um, I've obviously read a lot about you, but uh, just for quote unquote interview purposes, can you um, just tell me a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, so I grew up in York, Maine. Actually, since we're talking to a Maine audience, um, I we moved from Massachusetts to Bath when I was three, or yeah, three or four. And uh, so I, uh, Maine's my home state, although I, I was not, I was born in Massachusetts, but you don't have to tell anybody that. And uh, um, we lived in Woolwich, Bath, that area until I was in fifth grade. And then we moved to York and uh, I, I grew up there, there in York. While I was there is when I learned about the Naval Academy, went to the Naval Academy at, after the Naval Academy, went into the SEAL team, spent 10 years in the SEAL teams, and then uh, was selected as an astronaut in 2004. And, uh, and so here I am. Well, I've heard and read that even though you were born in Massachusetts and now obviously you spend a lot of time in other parts of the country, you still consider Maine your home state, and I know that you still love Maine very much. Um, so I'm just curious, uh, what is it about Maine that you love so much? You know, it just feels like home to me when I come back. Uh, um, my high school friends have come and gone and left and returned, but we all uh, see, see and keep in touch with a few of those folks, uh, uh, neighbors. It just that's where I my feel my roots are, and that's what draws me back there. But at the same token, it it feels good from other respect that it's pretty there. I like being on the coast. Uh, you know. My hometown, York, is, as you probably know, is right a, a coastal town. And I remember mowing lawns as a young kid and playing basketball on the on the court that's right there in Short Sands Beach. And and all of that is just really really fond memories for me. Um, and uh, spending time in Portland, for instance, nice little town. Um, going to LL Bean. I made it to uh, Fort Kent for the first time in my life uh, after. I landed from space and did uh, uh, a week-long tour of different schools. So it was kind of neat to get to the northern tip of the state. Uh, but for all those reasons, it just feels like uh, it, it's where I'm connected to. All right. I didn't want to interrupt you, but we've got to back things up a little bit. You played a lot of basketball growing up? I did, yeah. I yeah. did, too. I loved basketball. That was my favorite sport. So it's awesome to to be able to connect with you on that level, fellow ball player. Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Gard Gardner, Maine. Gardner. Is it Gardner High School or is it, uh, yeah? Yep, Gardner High School. A tiger. I don't think, I don't think we played you guys in at York. Um, maybe, maybe unless we met in the, in the playoffs or whatever, but yeah. I actually, um, I do remember um, we played York. It was actually in a summer league tournament down in um, Rhode Island, I think, at Providence College. Um, uh, both York High School and my high school at Gardner were there, and we ended up two schools from Maine playing each other in a tournament in Rhode Island. It was it was funny, but it was a great experience. That's weird. Is, is uh, Gardner, I can't remember, is Gardner in the Western Maine Conference or Eastern Maine Conference? Eastern Maine. Yeah, so Western Maine plays um, the playoffs in the Augusta Civic Center, and so the last time I was in the uh, prior to this year, the last time I had been in the Augusta Civic Center was walking off the floor after a loss in a playoff game my, my junior or senior year, I can't remember. And uh, I think my junior year, my senior year, we didn't. No, I take that back, my senior year. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Uh, that was the last time I was on the court in the Civic Center until this year they invited me back to some uh, a conference, the main transportation um, conference. And, and I was speaking on the floor in the Civic Center and I... I mentioned, hey, this is really kind of real for me because the last, surreal for me because the last time I was standing here, um, we're walking off after getting our butts kicked. Yeah. All right, we'll direct now into a little bit more of a 
serious quote unquote interview. Um, can you just talk about your experience as a Navy SEAL? You mentioned you were in it for 10 years. Can you talk about what that was like? I mean, very rewarding job. Uh, it's a hard job. Uh, there's getting through training, as you probably have seen on Discovery Channel or whatever, is, is a whole subject of conversation, but it, that's tough, and I'm proud that I made it through it. Um, you make it through SEAL training, not as an individual, but with your classmates and your boat crewmates and your swim buddy. Uh, that's what gets you through. And, uh, and so I had others to help me and I helped others get through themselves. So, so that part is, was, was, uh, was that. And then the remaining time where I was a qualified SEAL, was, I spent, let's see, four years driving um, underwater vehicles called SDV, SEAL Delivery Vehicles. Um, and they, we launched those from full submarines called, uh, where this dry deck shelter it's called, a chamber that's affixed to the back of a submarine that you can drive your mini sub in and out of like a garage, which uh, at, in hindsight was really, really good training for spacewalking, all, all that underwater time. I didn't know it at the time, obviously. Um, so I did four years of that, then went to graduate school and, uh, and then went to SEAL Team 3, which is in um, San Diego. And from, from there, moved back to the East Coast and, and uh, was at a special boat team where we drive, uh, uh, drive all the boats that get you to and from missions. And, uh, and then it's another different SEAL team, SEAL Team 10. Went to Afghanistan twice in there, had a couple six-month deployments before September 11th where we're around the world in different locations. So that's kind of 10 years in a nutshell. Um, you mentioned obviously how you have been to Afghanistan a couple times. I know um, one of or one of those times that you went was in fact just two weeks after the September 11th attacks. So can you just talk about um, what the experience of going to Afghanistan was like, especially in particular when you were deployed such a short time after that um, tragedy? Um, so just a little background on that. At the time, SEAL Teams three, SEAL Team Three's area of responsibility in the world was the Middle East, and uh, the way we typically staff of um, that responsibility is one SEAL platoon will deploy for six months to that area, and then um, you come back for about a year and a half, and you do different levels of training in that year and a half, and move people. But there's other teams that other platoons that are rotating through that. Well. Our normally scheduled deployment was supposed to be Thanksgiving time of 2001. So when September 11th happened, we just happened to be the most combat ready SEAL platoon, just by lucky timing, um, at on the West Coast, whose job it was to cover that area. So that's how it was no question that as soon as uh, um, the airplanes happened at like nine in the morning East Coast time, so it was six in the morning. For me, I was taking a shower and got out of the shower, and I and I saw it, and I just basically knew right away that we were. I was going into work to pack our gear, um, and that was actually my mom doesn't like to hear this, but that was pretty cool from SEAL Team viewpoint. You know, that's why we train, that's why we're ready to go, and it was a it was a an honor to be in a platoon that was going to go there. We didn't really, when we left San Diego, we didn't really know where exactly we were going because they didn't have an established foothold in Afghanistan at that short juncture. So it was a series of stops in different places uh, and before we could get our boots on the ground there. All right, so we'll fast forward a little bit. How do you feel like all of these experiences with the Navy SEALs, I know you touched on it a little bit a moment ago, but how do you feel like all that experience helped prepare you for NASA? Well, uh, life as an astronaut is all about um, working through, in space I'm talking about, working through priorities and making decisions to keep your crewmates and yourself safe and keep the vehicle safe. Um, and, and it's fortunately more in training than in real life because the stuff generally works. But in training, the instructors throw all these malfunctions at us and um, the computers break and the power breaks and the, there's holes in the space station. It's just total craziness in the training uh, and so to get through that you just have to prioritize and just okay what do I got to do right now and then just kind of accomplish that and that's very much what life in a SEAL platoon particularly in combat was is what's the most important thing to us right now and how do we 
deal with that and then deal with anything, the next worst thing later. All right, so be honest here. What's more difficult, basic training or living on the space station? You mean SEAL training? Yeah. Uh, oh, SEAL training by far. Yeah, it, it's good living on the space station. It's no no problem up there. It wasn't too crowded or anything up there? It's not too crowded. It feels big. There's plenty of room. The food is plentiful. Um, there's one bathroom for six people. And in Bud's, you, you, well, you could argue that the whole ocean is your bathroom, but uh, it doesn't quite have the same ratio. <laughs> All right, so I know you made a trip up here to Hudson a couple years ago um, for a little breakfast thing to speak to some people. What did you take away from that first trip up to Hudson? Well, one, Hudson has gotten a whole lot bigger than when I was a kid. I remember, uh, I think I had a basketball clinic there or, or something. I, I don't remember exactly why, but I went to Hudson for some reason in high school. And uh, it was just, I, it struck me as a small little community college type place uh, it, it wasn't a community college but you know what I mean just no dormitories just students come for the day and leave um, and then when I went back last year or whenever it was I could not believe how big it was how many programs they have how many students come there uh, it was just really impressive to see that growth um, really I it just it, I was amazed so being that you are an astronaut and a former Navy SEAL, you probably have a lot of opportunities to speak to a lot of different places, universities and otherwise. So I'm just curious um, what it is about Hudson that makes us so lucky to have you in a couple weeks to come speak to our graduating class. Uh, you asked. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was, that was the basic thing we asked and you were willing? Yeah, that, it's pretty that pretty much that simple. The um, the the uh, president, Bob Clark, I if I got it, that Bob Clark, right? Yeah, he he and I had really nice conversations last year, and, and we enjoyed talking to each other. And uh, and I, I I think that's why he he reached back this year and said, "Hey, would you be interested in being our commencement speaker?" And I said, "Sure, absolutely, no problem." And and. Uh, and oh, by the way, it's going to be on Mother's Day, and what better reason to be in my home state than on Mother's Day? So, have you? I'm sure you have, but um, can you give us a little taste of what you're going to talk about when you come up here in a couple weeks to speak to the class? No. You can't. Mm -hmm. Confidential, <laughs> or just haven't thought about it. <laughs> no. Uh, I kind of mold it over, but. Uh, you know, general stuff, telling, telling, um, tell, telling the students about, uh, about what's in store for them in the future, how exciting it is to be starting out life, and what I've learned that's helped me in my life to get, to get through hard times and to get through exciting times and take advantage of opportunities. Just general stuff. Awesome. Well, Commander Cassidy, thank you very much for joining me this afternoon. I really appreciate it.